What's up guys? Welcome back to the Golf Magic channel. Now today I'm testing out the Callaway MacDaddy CB Wedge. The CB stands for Cavity Back. Now you can see I'm back home in my office. I was going to film and talk to the camera whilst on the course, but it was just oh my God. A, a little bit windy. Oh Either way, I've put this club through a range of testing and I've played a few holes with it as well. What I'm going to show you today is the testing that I did. So the first bit of testing I did was from about 70 or 80 yards, so that kind of three-quarter wedge swing. And I went in, did about 30 yards, then did some chip shots and lob shots, and then finally finished with the bunker. I'm not going to show too much of the bunker, but I'll get to that a little bit later. So I'm going to talk through a range of things with this club, from the overall performance to the spin, the forgiveness, and just go into detail everything else about it. So let's get right into the video. So first things first, let's talk about the design of this club itself. Now Callaway have been very clear that this is obviously a cavity back club, so it's got a lot of forgiveness and you can see that in the overall design. It's pretty chunky, it does remind me of the old Ping I clubs. So pretty big, pretty thick of a top line, but not too like bad to look at aesthetically. It's still pretty good and it definitely looks very easy to hit from a dress. Now the 52, the 56 and the 60 are a bit different. I'll get onto that a little bit later when I go through the 52 and the 60 degree wedge. But it's overall, it's quite a nice club to look at. For a tour player or a tour performance player itself in the amateur level, I wouldn't recommend it just because it does have that really thick offset. But it's not that bad to look at and I definitely wouldn't say no to any sort of player. For a player who's 20, 30 in handicap, have a look at this club and see what you, what you think of it because it looks pretty nice. Before we get into the performance of the club, let's talk about the technology behind it. Now Callaway have said that the Mac Daddy CB wedge is designed to create a seamless transition from cavity back irons into your wedges, player friendly shaping, a slightly larger head and thicker top line and Callaway's proprietary jaw grooves combined to offer the confidence of an iron with the control of a wedge. Now in the mid and higher lofts, a modified W grind enhances bounce to give greater forgiveness during bunker play and hitting shots from deeper off. The addition of Jaws grooves with a precise edge and sharpness also helps golfers generate lots of spin from a host of lies. In the sand lob models, Jaws grooves extend across the whole face, an innovation borrowed from Callaway's PM grind wedges developed in consultation with star professional Phil Mickelson to give control wherever you hit it. Dr. Alan Hocknell, the Senior Vice President of Research and Development at Callaway Golf, has said that the Mac Daddy CB wedges will be the club's golfers go to after playing their set wedges for a period of time but wish to step up to a more specialist, bespoke product without any loss of forgiveness or ease of use. So with the technology done, let's talk about the overall performance of this club. Now first of all, let's go from the 70 or 80 yard mark to begin with. Now I must apologise, you can see the hat that I'm wearing is a massive tuft out of the back of my head. I didn't realise, let's not comment on it and move on. But overall this club was actually really interesting. Now I don't particularly like those high forgiveness wedges, the ones that are really clunky. I like a tall feel, like the MG2TW for instance. But with this one, it performed really, really well. But the one thing that I will say is the spin that I got off this, especially from this distance, and I'll show you further in, was pretty phenomenal. Now you can see I was getting about five to 15 foot worth of spin for more or less all of the shots that I hit. There was a bit of wind which will factor in, so I will say, say that like maybe a little bit less, but in comparison to other wedges I've hit, notably the MG2TW, I got a lot more spin here. Now a wedge that is built for a higher handicapper, I would expect this to be probably not something that I focus on because when you're a lower handicapper you start thinking about backspin and playing for backspin but with these wedges it seems pretty prevalent for most of the shots. Now I didn't hit or try and hit a range of shots here I just hit, hit my standard 70 to 80 yard pitch shot with a 52 degree wedge and it was pretty easy to hit I didn't I had some poor strikes from the I think the fourth shot which wasn't great, but it still ended up about 20, 25 foot away from the hole. Now for an amateur golfer, that's pretty much spot on. So I wasn't too unhappy about that. So from this kind of range of testing, I was really impressed. And so much so that I was thinking, are these, kind of, are these wedges good enough for everyone, every sort of amateur, even though they're built for the, the higher handicap golfer, are these good enough for people who are on like the five to 10 range. Now for the next range of testing, I took it a bit further into about 30 yards, still a very difficult shot, and I was still using the 52 degree wedge. What I did here was play a range of shots. So the first few I hit were just trying to float it in, not really trying to get that much spin and see how it performed. I must say that I wasn't playing great on the day of filming. I, ball striking wise, it was 
pretty dreadful. But the results that I got from here particularly were pretty good. And notably, again, a lot of spin. You can see on the filming here that was a shot I hit that one, one hop and stopped like I was playing on a PGA Tour green. I can say I was not playing on that. These greens are pretty receptive, but it's a linked course, so I wasn't expecting anything like that. But I was getting a lot of spin for even of the 30 to 35 yard shots, which is really, really nice to see on a club that is built for the higher handicap player. Now, the 52 degree wedge seems very versatile. I was hitting shots from kind of all over the place, trying to hit different types of shots, higher, lower, all kinds of things, and it performed really well. So much so that you think, is this club built for a higher handicapper? Is it built for anyone? I think it's just built for everyone really. And the design of it is the thing that they're pinpointing towards the higher handicapper player. So really interesting here. And it's really refreshing to see a club that has kind of ticks all the boxes for that higher handicapper because when they transition down and improve and get to the, let's say high, high teens, low teens, they're gonna start being a little bit more versatile in what shots they can hit. And you may think, okay, now they don't want to hit a shot with a cavity back club, a club that's got a lot of offset. But these clubs are so versatile that you can do it. So after this, I moved on to the around the green shot. So really close, probably about 10 yards away. And this shot, or this kind of category of shots, for me, this is the weak point of my game alongside putting. I am pretty dreadful about getting, with getting up and down from around the greens. If I miss the green, I'm not very happy. So this is not a strong part of my game. And you can see here in the results that I get, I'm not putting this down to the club at all. I hit very, very bad shots here. And what I did as well is I switched to the 60 degree wedge. Now, as I said in the tech report, they have grooves all over the club. It doesn't stop at the toe, it's everywhere, like the PM grinds from recent years. And I love this because I hit one shot that would have actually missed the grooves if it was on a normal, uh, normal wedge that didn't have any of the grooves there. So with this, if I didn't have that, it would have gone a lot shorter, but it rolled out, it went to about 10 foot, and I was pretty happy with that. Now, as I said, my short game is pretty dreadful, but for someone who is along the 20 to 30 handicap range, this is spot on. Yes, it takes a lot of getting used to, but once you have got that, it's a really nice club to have in the bag, which you can utilize. And so much so that with this 60 degree wedge, I'm pretty tempted to put this club in my bag just to have that like staple for a shot that I know I'm gonna get close or know I'm gonna not miss hit or anything like that because it's pretty difficult to do. Again, it was very versatile. I felt very comfortable hitting the, the like lob shots or low shots and it did spin as you can see in one of the shots here. So it was a really nice club to have around the greens. I would only ever hit a 60 degree wedge with this kind of the CB Mac Daddy. I wouldn't hit anything other than that. I would like a little bit of a more of a, a tall feel for shots around the green. But if I was hitting a shot with a lob wedge, this is exactly the design and the type of club that I would want for this. And finally, let's get onto bunkers. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this because as you can see, the bunker shot that I chose to hit was into about a 30 mile an hour headwind. I was blinded after every single shot with sand going into my eyes and the bunker that I was in had more or less zero sand in it. So I chose pretty much the hardest shot that I could hit with this uh, with this club. And still, I, I, I will be honest, I hit a lot of bad shots here. It, the, the bounce of the club went through it, completely my fault and it went too far. But once I kind of got the hang of it, once I, was pretty comfortable with getting the sand in my eyes. I was hitting a lot of chunk and runs and they were very easy. The large offset, the massive amount of bounce that you get under this, you can really go under the sand, get through it, and you can really get some good results here. This is exactly what this like 60 degree wedge is built for and you can really tell. So it's really refreshing again to see a club like this perform so well in many areas of the game. So finally, I'll give my overall verdict on this club. Now, I'll be honest, going into this, I didn't really think much of this club. It's a cavity back wedge. For, for me, I didn't think I would have any sort of positive feel about it. I thought it'd be okay and I'd be able to hit it really well, but nothing in terms of, oh, I might put this in the bag. I might think of hitting a lot more shots. I'll play a few more holes with it. That's exactly what I did. I love this club. I especially love the 60 degree wedge for the versatility that you have around the greens. And the one thing that surprised me so much was the spin. Like you don't expect this in game improvement irons or wedges or anything. You just mainly expect the club to perform well and be very forgiving. With this, it was spinning back on the 80 yard shots about 15 foot, which you don't really see in clubs like this. So I'll have to say really well done to Callaway for getting a club that ticks more or less every single box here. I will probably put this 60 degree wedge in my bag because of how versatile it is. So if you're looking for new wedges, if you're at any handicap range really, and you're thinking what club could I have that would be really versatile around the greens, get you a lot of spin, 
I would 100% try the Mac Daddy CB wedges out. They're really, really nice. They're a very fair price as well, or £119 in the UK. And they're coming out to retail on the 24th of September. So if you're in the market for some new wedges, I would definitely recommend trying these out. If you guys enjoyed the video today, make sure to leave a like and comment down below if you're thinking of trying out these Mac Daddy CB wedges. I'll see you guys at the next video.